Hey everyone, it's John V for PhoneArena.com and you're watching our in-depth video review of the T-Mobile G Slate, the very first uh, Android 3.0 Honeycomb tablet for T-Mobile's lineup. As you can tell in the back there, it sports two dual 5 megapixel cameras. It's able to shoot 3D video 720p with it, so that's the one unique feature about it. It's available right now through T-Mobile. No contract price is $750, so it's a little bit hefty, uh, but if you go with the contract route, you're only going to spend $529.99 with it. So we'll see whether or not its novel features makes it a unique uh, unique offering versus the competition out there, or whether or not it's still a decent Android tablet. As you can tell, there's nothing really too compelling with the G Slate's design. It's pretty much reserved and uh, generic with its looks. You have a bezel outlining the display, but it's not uniform. It's a little bit wider on the left and right sides. And for a device that's packing a, an 8.9 inch display, it's fairly wide versus something like the 10.1 inch display of the uh, Motorola Zoom. So if we place them both against one another, you'll see that the G Slate is just as wide as the uh, Zoom here. So it doesn't really translate to a more streamlined or compact tablet. Nonetheless, though, we like its choice of materials. It's definitely solid all around. It feels good. We have some curved corners here, which makes it very comfortable to hold. A little bit better than the sharp corners of the uh, Zoom. Um, it employs the soft touch coating material on the back. It does a great job in repelling dirt and debris. You have a little bit of character here with the metallic strip, just like the G2X. But overall, it's not definitely uh, something that stands out, but we like the solid feel of the uh, T-Mobile G Slate. One of the other great characteristics that we love about the G Slate is that it has a gorgeous looking 8.9 inch capacitive touchscreen. It has a resolution of 1280 by 768 pixels, so it has some really nice pixel density. It makes for a fantastic experience. You can read out even the tiniest of text, no problems. Um, it has a very crisp and clean look to it. We like its color production, very natural, versus something like the Motorola Zoom. And on top of that, it has just an overall luminance to it, a lot brighter, which makes it easier to see in direct sunlight. And as you can tell, the viewing angles are pretty good too. You're not going to lose any visibility on screen. Taking a peek on the left edge of the tablet, we have the dedicated power button. It's pretty decent in size and offers a moderate tactile feel when you press it down. It's not too bad at all. You have the left speaker, 3.5mm headset jack, and right here is the proprietary power port. Meanwhile, on the right edge of the tablet, you got two speakers here, which uh, provide stereo support. So whether you're holding it in landscape, because you have the other speaker on the left edge, or in portrait, either way, you're going to get uh, stereo output. We find the microphone and also volume rocker on the top edge of the tablet here. It's a little bit confusing with the uh, volume rocker just because when you hold it in landscape, you think that the button right here is going to be to uh, vol for volume up, but in fact, it's always volume down. Volume up is the top button. It has a pretty good feel to it, and the response is pretty moderate. Conversely, there's quite a few different stuff at the bottom edge of the tablet. You got the pin connectors here, which allows you to connect it with the dock. HDMI out port, which also offers a video out to high definition television. You have a micro USB port for data connection. And when you use the included micro USB to USB adapter here, it allows you to charge peripherals such as smartphones to it. And finally, in the rear, you have two 5 megapixel autofocus cameras. It has the ability to shoot 1080p on regular video recording and 720p for 3D videos. You have an LED flash right there. As we mentioned, you have the strip right there for the Google, with Google branding. And you actually have access to the SIM card slot on the top. You just remove the plastic cover right here and you put in your card right there. Just like the Motorola Zoom, the T-Mobile G Slate is packing a dual-core NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor that's clocked in at 1 GHz. It makes for a great experience when it comes to just navigating across the uh, platform here. You can tell the home screen, even with the live wallpaper activated, it's fairly responsive here to the touch. When you get to the app panel, you have a nice transition effect, and you can still scroll with no problem. But it's not as smooth or fluid looking compared to the iPad 2. And there are some tendencies for it to slow down on, or lag. Um, you definitely, it's definitely more noticeable in portrait. It just seems like the platform still yet fully optimized to take advantage of the processor here. And you can tell that there's just a little bit of lag to it. 
We already went to great detail about the Android 3.0 Honeycomb experience with the Motorola Zoom, and here with the T-Mobile G Slate, it's pretty much identical, and we'll just briefly talk about it here. So there's plenty of personalization. The thing that we like about Android 3.0 Honeycomb is that it's definitely up there in terms of visual appeal. You have a lot of 3D effects going on with it. We like how there's that outlining border surrounding most things here. You could see it more and more here with the app panel. As you scroll on the left side, it turns, just changes the icons into these uh, highlighted borders, which gives a really nice uh, attention to detail. Again, as you said, there's plenty of personalization. You can just do a long press anywhere on the home screen. From here, you have access to a bunch of different stuff, such as your widgets, you have your app shortcuts, different wallpapers, and much more. Plenty of different stuff that you could see. The only thing different about the G slides out from the onset, we noticed that it packs on different style uh, clocks, the uh, old Android ones, and a few others on top of the uh, stock uh, honeycomb one that you see right there. So here's the landscape style on-screen keyboard of the G Slate and it's the stock one here just like what we find on the Motorola Zoom. The thing that we like about it is that buttons are fairly well sized and on top of that it exhibits a really responsive rate so it's able to keep up with us. Unfortunately you can't use it like a normal keyboard. You have this tendency to use it just like this but it's basically uh, reserved for just a regular one button press. You have access to some quick uh, punctuation spot in the bottom right here like the period and question mark. You can do a long press and you have access to some others here. Unfortunately we would love to see some numbers implemented to the top row so it has an easier access to it rather than going to the secondary function here to input them. You have also a Google voice recognition button right here in the bottom right so you could uh, voice your speak your words instead of typing it up. And lastly you have the uh, portrait style keyboard. The thing we like about it is that our thumbs are able to encompass the entire layout so it's pretty much like a smartphone and fairly responsive. Without a doubt, the Gmail experience with the T-Mobile G Slate is satisfyingly great just because it takes advantage of the tablet and it offers you all the rich features. We're treated to the usual two-panel layout here that we're accustomed to seeing. On the left, you have your folders, and of course on the right are the contents of those folders. When you select something, it shifts everything over to the left, and then you're treated to the full view of the email right here. You get things like threaded view, the ability to add multiple uh, accounts, so it's definitely a great experience. Alternatively, you can always set up other email clients out there like Yahoo or Hotmail. All you gotta do is just provide your email address and password and nine out of 10 times it'll automatically set up. In some rare instances, especially if it's not something that's quite popular, it's gonna require some additional pieces of information such as server addresses and ports. Strangely, the T-Mobile G Slate lacks flash support out of the box, so you just gotta go to the app panel and you can tell right here it says get flash. You click that, it automatically gets you to the Android market to download it. Once you have that, you're treated to a fantastic experience just because you get a full desktop-like view of the uh, complex web pages. On top of that, it loads up fairly fast just because it has a T-Mobile's HSPA Plus connection here, so it loads it up in a good amount of time. Kinetic scrolling is smooth, you can tell here it has support for pinched gestures for zooming. You can double tap a specific area for it to automatically resize. And overall, we're very happy with the uh, desktop-like experience of the T-Mobile G Slate. Much like any other Android device out there, the G Slate comes with the usual assortment of Google-based applications, such as Google Attitude, Google Maps, and of course Google Talk, which allows you to actually do video chat with the front-facing camera. But T-Mobile packs in some additional stuff, which we'll quickly just run down here. You have things like AccuWeather, it shows you the weather at your location. You have documents to go, so you can read Word files and even uh, Excel and PowerPoint. Uh, you also have uh, Need for Speed Shift, which shows off the graphical prowess of the tablet. And you also have T-Mobile TV, which is a subscription for watching uh, television, live TV, or on-demand stuff right here. And finally, you have the Xenio reader, reader, which basically allows to uh, read subscription magazines right on tablet. Actually, the other thing that we like about the G Slate and Android Honeycomb 3.0 is the nice looking uh, music player that it has. Uh, it has this carousel, 3D like carousel here, so you can browse through all your albums. You can go do the usual route by narrowing it down to albums, artists, or different songs. You have all your, uh, your albums right here. When you select a specific one, it's going to give you all the tracks associated with it. And of course, when you play a song, it'll display your usual stuff, such as the album cover, the on screen controls, track information. And if you minimize it, 
you'll see that the uh, mini player is at the bottom right corner here at the notification panel. You have access to the mini player. As far as the audio quality, it's not as strong as the uh, one that we find in the Motorola Zoom, but luckily it doesn't strain or crackle a louder setting. It just produces some neutral sounding tones. The gallery app we've seen before on the Motorola Zoom and it's identical here with the G Slate. It just shows off the graphical prowess of the Tegra 2 processor. Here you can see all the different content. Um, if you do rotate uh, the uh, tablet itself, it automatically will give you like this stack effect with the albums. Very nice, great presentation. When you get to an album, it's going to display your content in your usual grid-like format. When you make selection, you'll be able to do stuff such as share it and even have uh, some minor editing tools available at your disposal. Video playback is no problem with the G Slate just because of its fast processor and then combining it with its gorgeous looking display it makes for a great experience. The video we have here is encoded in MPEG-4, 1280 by 720 resolution. Plenty of detail, the colors are vibrant and lush and moves at a nice rate so it doesn't stutter whatsoever. Again, the camera interface is pretty much identical to the one with the Motorola Zoom since it's, since it's the stock experience. You get a good eye of the uh, viewfinder right here. It takes the majority of the space. On the right side, you have some different functions here. You got one for your zoom, digital zoom. You have this carousel here that gives you, gives you access to a bunch of different stuff. The first one being flash mode. The second one, your white balance. The third one, color effect. You have scene modes, which is plenty to choose from. And of course, the camera settings to so change the picture size the quality and the focus mode. You got the button, the switch right here to move between video and also uh, shooting stills. And you have the button right here to switch to the front facing camera. You have the, you get to the picture gallery right there. And the shutter key is right here on the right hand side. You hold it down slightly, automatically will focus. You let go to take the shot. In terms of image quality by its 5 megapixel autofocus camera for still shots, they're average at best. They're not as good as what we find with the Motorola Zoom. Um, in fact, uh, it produces some cooler looking colors, kind of bland on, on the bland side. Detail's not as sharp looking as we'd like it to be. And in low lighting conditions, there's a little bit of digital noise that's evident in there. Luckily though, the LED flash does a decent job in illuminating shot. But overall, it's good enough for a 4x6 printout, but you don't want to blow it up to something larger. One of the other highlights about the T-Mobile G Slate is that it has the ability to shoot full 1080p video on top of that also 720p and lower resolution here. But overall the quality is average at best as well. Uh, there's a decent amount of detail, colors a little bit on the bland side, there's some noticeable e evidence of artifacting going on when you're panning. Um, and the audio recording isn't as terrible to tell you choose. The voices are a little bit on the grainy side. Um, and on top of that, there's a, there's a little bit of a jitteriness to it, despite it being able to shoot at 30 frames per second. It's good enough, and of course, uh, it should be better than most things out there. So let's now place our attention on the G Slate's ability to shoot 720p high definition videos in 3D with its dual cameras. It's only reserved for videos, you can't take photos in 3D with it. The tablet comes with an included pair of anaglyph uh, style retro 3D glasses, so cyan, the uh, red and cyan colors here. You need to bring it along if you want to be able to watch 3D content on the tablet itself, or if you want to connect it with the HDMI cable here, or HDMI port at the bottom to your television set, you'll still be required to use the uh, glasses. Um, so here's the interface. It's pretty much similar to a stock Android smartphone. You have the record button on the right side. On the left you have some options. We'll quickly go through that. So the first one here just gives you the different modes. By default it's set to anaglyph which requires a 3D uh, retro style glasses. You have a mixed mode, single, and also side by side. And here is the uh, depth control. So depending on what you're trying to shoot, it's by default set to the, m to the middle so it, gets, it gives you a good balance. But if you set it all the way to the left towards negative 10, it gives more prominence to the uh, items in the uh, background. So you get more of a 3D effect at that. But if you set it conversely in the opposite end of the spectrum to the positive 10 all the way to the right, it gives more focus with the 3D effect to, with the uh, images up close to the camera here. So you have that. And of course you have your settings here. You can change the white balance, the video quality, and also the recording. So here's a sample that was shot in 3D. It's 720p, shoots at a frame rate of 30 frames per second. So for the most part, it is fairly smooth with its playback. 
Details are kind of slim though, a little bit on the grainy side, and it does uh, it does uh, adversely adjust exposure depending on the lighting condition here. Um, with the included pair of glasses though, it, you definitely notice the the 3D effect going. You get a sense of depth with it, especially when images come from the distance towards the camera or vice versa. You definitely get that effect, which is definitely nice and adds to its novel feature, but it isn't strikingly as great as we would like it to be. And of course, it's the convenience factor is kind of lacking just because you need the 3D glasses in order to enjoy content on a tablet itself. Fortunately, the g slate managed to retain a solid connection to the network in high coverage areas, and we didn't experience any major fluctuations during our testing. For a tablet, the T-Mobile g slates average with battery life. Uh, we managed to get one whole day out of it, a normal usage, so you don't have to worry about recharging the uh, tablet anytime throughout the day. It's kind of on par with what we see at the Motorola Zoom, but it doesn't quite hit the mark that we find with the iPad 2. Granted that, the T-Mobile G Slate manages to differentiate itself from the pack out there thanks to its ability to shoot 720p videos in high definition, we're not quite yet sold on this novel feature just because the quality isn't yet up there. On top of that, you have the the, uh, the inconvenience factor just because you, don't, you have to carry around the 3D glasses in order to watch and enjoy content on the tablet itself. Aside from that, it's a fantastic Android 3.0 honeycomb experience. And if you're looking to pick this one up for $529.99, it's a good deal to say the least. You get a lot of hardware under the hood, such as the dual core processor, HSPA Plus connectivity, 32 gigabytes of storage. And again, you have the novel feature of taking uh, videos in 3D. Uh, but if you're looking to buy it on, on no contract for $750, it's definitely a hard buy. And you'd have to really think about whether or not it's going to be, whether or not the uh, 3D feature of this uh, tablet's worth it at that price. So if you'd like to learn more about the t Will G Slate or for all latest cell phone reviews, new specs and information, you can check us out at